This is Prince Hanley coming to you today with 100,000 watts of pure love. The voice to Israel and for Israel. I want to talk to you today about Babylon the harlot exposed. This is very critical, crucial, timely teaching, not only for the Jews in Israel, but also for Orthodox, Hasidic, and Messianic believers all over the world. While conducting teaching seminars and through feedback from the seminars through the years, I've discovered that real growth and dedicated discipleship is directly related to teaching concerning end time prophecy. I've seen young men and women grow into seasoned leaders for Yahweh, the God of Israel, in the last 40 years as they learned about God's plan for Israel and for the last days. Because of this, I've been instructed by the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, to give a brief overview in the next two podcasts. There will be material in the show notes that you will probably not find in seminars or in seminary or yeshiva libraries or even in Christian or Jewish bookstores, particularly where it relates to Islam. Because of the urgency of the need for this instruction to the body of Messiah, I will be releasing these show notes in a format which you can use for training others in your synagogues, in your churches, in your fellowships, in your schools, or yeshivas. The title of this podcast, Babylon the Harlot Exposed, is just that. I'm going to show you certain details of the harlot Babylon that are not covered by usual dispensational or theological exegesis. First, I want to talk to you about Babylon the harlot, her origin. In 1967, I was blessed to cross paths with a fellow engineer and speaker named Ralph Mount Jr., who did much research concerning Babylon, mystical, religious, and literal Babylon. His book Babylon, published in 1964 and also 1966, is very thorough and detailed, both historically and scripturally. In his book, he summarizes the historic, temporal, or civil powers of the world as follows. Number one, the first Babylonian empire was founded by Nimrod. From the people of this empire come all the empires of the world. God confounded the language of the people and scattered them abroad to his predetermined boundaries of ethnicity, or the nations. You can read that in Genesis chapter 11 in the Torah. Number two, the people of Israel were set apart by God. Bible prophecy deals with the nations as they affect the Israelites, or the nation of Israel, in one way or another. Number three, the first major empire to persecute Israel was, of course, Egypt. This empire was not included in Daniel's prophecy. Number four, the second major empire to persecute Israel was Assyria. It was by Assyria that the Israelites of the northern kingdom of Israel were taken into captivity approximately 722 B.C. This empire also was not included in Daniel's prophecy. Number five, the third major empire which persecuted the Israelites was the second Babylonian empire. It was under this empire that the Israelites in the southern kingdom of Judah were taken into captivity. This empire was the first in Daniel's series of four kingdoms. You can read this in the Tanakh in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Notice this. The reason that Daniel started with the second Babylonian empire was that this was during his lifetime and pertained to the interpretation of dreams and dream visions that dealt with this empire and subsequent empires up to the end times. Number six, the fourth major empire and the second in Daniel's series of four kingdoms was Medo-Persia. Number seven, the fifth major empire and the third in Daniel's series of four kingdoms was Greece. 
And number eight, the sixth major empire, and the fourth in Daniel's series of four kingdoms, was Rome. Remember this summary that I just made of historic powers, as it is a key to understanding the seven heads of the beast upon which the harlot Babylon rides. Most students of Bible prophecy will agree that in the last days there will be a reconstituted Roman Empire. This is mostly because of the dream visions and interpretations in Daniel chapters 2 and 7. Many liberal and neo-Orthodox theologians attempt to discount the validity of Daniel as a prophet. However, Yeshua, Jesus, gave validation to Daniel's prophetic office when Yeshua, as Israel's Messiah, taught concerning the last days. You can read that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, and Mark chapter 13, verse 14, in the Brit Hadashah, or the New Testament, the New Covenant. For over 100 years now, conservative or evangelical scholars have surmised that the geopolitical area encompassed by the previous Roman Empire would be revived and also be the arena from which the anti-Messiah, or the Antichrist, the false Messiah, would arise. However, certain situations that are being played out today may forge an entirely different set of circumstances while still emanating from the geographic confines of the old Roman Empire. May I suggest to you that the predominant force arising from the area of the old Roman Empire is none other than Islam, a religion spawned in hell by Satan, a religion based upon the teachings of a false prophet, Muhammad, and the false god, Allah. Right now in Europe, there are hundreds of Islamic schools. The old Roman Empire, composed of much of modern-day Europe, the Mediterranean countries, including North Africa and part of the Middle East, will be the sling from which the anti-Messiah, or the Antichrist, will be thrust. He could likely be of Syrian Greek background. And this false messiah, this coming world leader, will more than likely have a background that is a combination of Islam and Judaism, or Islam and nominal Christianity. The main point to realize, however, is that Islam will likely be the catalyst which will bring about the one world government. Let me explain. Number one, Muslim terrorism is now global. Number two, pertaining to people in the USA, you are already beginning to see the loss of your right to privacy. The Department of Homeland Security and the Patriot Act, even though established out of need and for the good of the populace, are still instruments that can and may one day be used for invasion of privacy of Christians and Jews, churches and synagogues. Number three, Islam is the number one force in the drive to one world government. Islamic terrorism will be the active agent to frighten people into wanting a one world governing body. People around the world will want peace and safety and will be willing to give up their constitutional rights for it. This will be the caveat for the Jews and for Israel when the coming world leader, chosen by the Ten Nation World Confederacy, tricks Israel into signing a seven-year treaty with conciliation that Israel can build the temple. However, it will be with great price, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. You can read teaching on this in the Brit Hadashah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. Also Daniel the prophet and also Jeremiah the prophet spoke about this. People will say, give me peace, leave me and my money alone, let me retire in style. Number four, Muslim terrorism is being used in the media to equate to fundamentalism. Just the other day I heard a news commentator say that there are fundamentalists in all religions and use the example of Christian fundamentalists. You can also hear this same comment about Jewish fundamentalists, the Orthodox, the Hasidic, and so forth. The Quran instructs Muslims to kill non-Muslims, and this especially promotes an anti-Jewish, anti-Christian concept. Christian fundamentalism and Jewish fundamentalism, especially Hasidic and Orthodox Jews, will not only be the targets of Islam, 
but of an ever-increasing cross-section of global society. Born again, real Christians will not be persecuted because they're Christians, but because they're considered fundamentalist, terrorists by society at large. Likewise, Hasidic and Orthodox Jews. Yeshivas, seminaries, Christian publishers, church movements are selling out and have embraced themselves in the tentacles of the one world religion. One major evangelical seminary recently accepted government money but had to sign an agreement that they would no longer teach students to convert Muslims. Churches are conducting surveys asking people what they should throw out or add in to get people in the community to come to church. Be careful when the world loves the church and when the world loves the synagogue. Over 20 years ago, Francis Schaeffer said, Americans, just like Germans in the days before the Nazis, will be influenced to give up their constitutional privileges in exchange for personal peace or affluence. What he was saying is that Americans will give up their freedom that was bought with the blood of their forefathers because they don't want their lifestyles to be disturbed. They want to be at peace. Dr. Robert Morey believes that this may be the last generation of Americans that knows freedom and the first that knows tyranny via the courts, legislation, and martial forces. He states, we are living in a watershed moment of history like a Christian ostrich. And may I say here that Israel needs to wake up and stop giving in to the demands of the Palestinians, the Arabs, the UN, the EU, and the USA. Now in the next episode, I will reveal to you the identity of Babylon the harlot, her support system, and how she will ultimately be destroyed by Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. In the meantime, Israel needs to take a definitive stand to oppose any nation, government, or entity that would try to take away her land, which is rightfully hers by, number one, victory in war in 1967 and 1973, and number two, by the promise of Jehovah God, the Holy One of Israel. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. This is Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure love.